too. Bad. I like yeah. when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, you my daddy, yeah, I like when you oh, when you right scrambling here, right and right scraping. No, 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 I, got I no like that. Shit. You know, I'll be practicing. I got. Yeah. In the last episode, we talked about Washington D.C. to Baltimore. In this episode, we're gonna talk about Baltimore to Philly. Welcome to the Truth About Acela, episode number three. Please exit through the rear door. Doors open. Recently, my phone had a hard drive failure, or whatever Apple said. Long story short, it actually died. So I had to buy a new phone. So please join my Patreon, any contribution helps. Speaking of dying, welcome to the Baltimore Potomac Tunnel. This is our second major Northeast Quarter improvement project after Union Station. I mean, aside from the Gateway program in New York and New Jersey, this is the highest profile project on the Northeast Corridor. The project includes two brand new tunnels that will be called Frederick Douglass. Hey, hey, Frederick Douglass. The tunnels are named after Frederick Douglass after he used trains to escape slavery through Baltimore. The new tunnels will relieve traffic through the 150 year old Baltimore and Potomac tunnels. Not only are these tunnels extremely old, but they're falling apart, so they require a lot of maintenance while still being kept in service, have tight curves and a slim loading gauge, so trains are limited to 30 miles per hour, and are double tracked, which creates some pretty nasty bottlenecks. As I said earlier, the project will contain two new twin board tunnels that will carry Mark and Amtrak trains into Baltimore Penn Station. Just look at this rendering. Shout out Frederick Douglass. So what you're seeing here can only be described as a Mark F-59 PHI with the pantograph pulling Superliner coaches behind it. And I thought I saw the worst rendering last video. <laughs> Mark the seller train set. Oh my what is going on man to be fair after doing content for a year and a half i've realized that most renderings utilize the same assets for example look at this og brightline rendering all right all right anyways the portal to the tunnels will be located just under the north ave light rail station then the tunnel will curve and meet the existing right of way at lafayette ave the max speed in the new tunnel will be 110 miles per hour. Now, part of the Frederick Douglass Tunnel Program, which is less talked about, are the non-tunnel parts. As you can see here on this map, it almost looks like the person drawing the green line got a little drunk halfway through. Unlike that horrible rendering we just saw, this is not a mistake. Amtrak genuinely plans to smoothen out the curves on this alignment. We can see the new alignment change in the new West Baltimore station renderings. Yes, this tunnel project also includes a new station at West Baltimore. The station will have longer platforms, be ADA accessible, and replace the older, obviously not ADA accessible station. Because this project is straightening the alignment, there are some property acquisitions that are involved, which means it's time to talk about the overall cost of this project. This project will cost around six to seven billion dollars and be completed by 2035. The project is just barely fully funded with Biden an award to get 4.5 billion dollars. Now the thing I like about this project is not just the fact that they're building new infrastructure, but the fact that they're building new infrastructure to complement the older infrastructure. You see, the Frederick Douglass Tunnel was originally supposed to be quad-tracked, but the project got cut down to double-tracked because they didn't have a stable funding source. But even with the added capacity of the new double track tunnel, Amtrak still realizes the potential for the old Baltimore and Potomac tunnel to be utilized. They can build a new tunnel, shut down the old tunnel for renovation, and then once completed, open up the older tunnel for slower commuter rail traffic. I mean, the tunnel is sandwiched between two stations. It's not like most commuter trains are going to reach high speeds on this section anyways. Speaking of these stations, let's look at Baltimore Penn. Baltimore, Pennsylvania Railroad Station actually just went under some recent renovations. Not only is the station's beautiful head house being renovated, but the platforms are being renovated too. Just at the start of this year, Amtrak opened up a new platform for Baltimore Penn Station, with another one scheduled for completion in the fall. Both of these platforms are high level and completely ADA accessible. And that's not all the plans that Amtrak has for the renovations for this station. See this parking lot right here? Well, Amtrak actually owns this land and is planning to redevelop it. Yup, that's correct. We only made it 43 miles and we're on to our next station redevelopment project. Let's take a look at the renderings. Right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you this. We're gonna ignore the TGV duplex scene here, here, and in here. I mean, this literally still has the SNCF logo on it. Anyways, this plan calls for a completely new head house and train hall on the opposite side of the station, which means the majority of passenger oriented functions will be shifted to this train hall. 
The existing historic building will have its upper floors become office spaces, with the bottom floors hosting restaurants and retail spaces. The existing concourse over the train tracks will be used to connect the two station buildings together. This allows the existing historic building to still be used as an entrance to the station. The total estimated cost of the station itself is $251 million. Now some of you may have seen the two giant translucent Lego pieces on the opposite side of the station. One of the buildings will be a commercial building with office spaces and retail and the other one will be a private residential building. Though I'm not sure how private it will be since the building looks like the equivalence of living in a fish tank. Seriously though, these buildings look like the epitome of energy and efficiency. The building is all glass. I know that electricity bill gotta be something devious. I don't know if it's just me but I hate how new buildings try to put green roofs and paint themselves as this green and clean energy efficient structure while burning through copious amounts of energy just to keep the building's temperature regulated due to its poor design. And I typically think these new modern buildings look cool, but these ones just seem out of place in contrast to the rest of the neighborhood. And if you want my personal opinions on these two structures outside the global climate change battle, because you know, I like to joke around this channel a lot, but sometimes we have to get serious. I think these two buildings will send the wrong message to the local neighborhood. I've talked about redlining and gentrification before in another video. In this section of West Baltimore is a historically black neighborhood. Build two glass monoliths that seem to disassociate themselves from the rest of the community and I think you send the wrong message to the community about what public transportation means. And to be clear, I have no problem with the actual station redevelopment itself. It's just a giant office building and residential building that I'm concerned about. Alright, moving on. Before we hit Wilmington Station, we have three bridge replacements to talk about. The first one is the replacement of the Gunpowder River Bridge. The Gunpowder River Bridge is located in Chase, Maryland, is only double-tracked, and is over 110 years old. Two new double-tracked bridge spans will replace it. And and speeds on the new bridge will be increased to over 125 miles per hour. The project is estimated to cost $1.3 billion, with construction expected to begin in 2028 and be completed by 2036. The next bridge replacement is the Bush River Bridge in Perryman, Maryland. A fixed high-level quad-tracked bridge will replace this existing 110-year-old movable double-tracked bridge. Speeds will be increased on the bridge to over 125 miles per hour. The bridge is estimated to cost $743 million, with construction beginning in October 2028 and being completed by September 2034. Next is the Susquehanna River Bridge Replacement. This is the largest and oldest out of the three bridges at 117 years old. Now this bridge replacement is pretty interesting. Just like the other bridges, the original bridge will be replaced with two double track spans. But unlike the other bridges, one span will be faster than the other. One span will be designed for 125 miles per hour, while the other one will be designed for 160. Either way, both of these spans will allow trains to travel faster than the current bridge's 90 mile per hour restrictions. The project is estimated to cost $2.7 billion, with construction beginning soon and being completed in 2036. Now I like the way that Amtrak is approaching these infrastructure projects. They're not just replacing these bridges and tunnels, but they're making them better. Faster, more capacity, that's what I like to see. What I don't like to see is a 2036 construction completion date. From my understanding, this project is starting without being fully funded. So just like every other rail infrastructure project in the US, we really don't know what the finishing date is. If the project isn't fully funded, then it won't get built. So hopefully that explains why I'm a little bit skeptical about the Washington DC project. It's not that I don't think the project is amazing, but $9 billion? I'd argue that replacing this 100 year old plus infrastructure is more important. We can make public transit look pretty, but we have to make it functional. Anyways, the next stop is Wilmington Joe Biden station. There's not really much going on here other than some new escalators being built. So you could say the renovations for this station are kind of sleepy. Oh brother, this guy stinks! What would it take Joe Biden to give a little bit of funding to quad track his own station? Hey, it never hurts to apply some pressure. Anyways, did you hear what happened to Drake? Crazy work. Hope you guys enjoyed this long episode. For earning your like and subscription, I love you. And if you made it this far in the video, stay safe out there, man. BBL Trizzy BBL Trizzy So I like you don't know me He's here to stir the trophy It ain't no mystery Got this BBL Trizzy I don't use it this glow up That's BBL Trizzy BBL Trizzy BBL Trizzy BBL Trizzy
Happy hours busy. I'm recording. Oh, okay.